Hi, it's Sue. Thanks for joining me for today's Bible reading. It's the reading for August 31st, and I'll be reading Ezekiel 5 through 8 from the World English Bible. And let me just tell you a brief outline for today's reading, just using the headings from my modern English version. So it has a sword against Jerusalem and judgment on idolatrous Israel. Okay, so we're back to Jerusalem and Israel here, not necessarily other nations that are being prophesied against and warned. And then we have the day of the Lord's wrath. And eight, chapter eight is abominations in the temple. So I'm sure there's some good prophetic meat in this section. I'm not going to um, talk about any of that. There's enough prognosticators online to get some good information from. I'll tell you what I look for when I look for uh, the word mentors. For those kind of things, I look for educated, experienced, and anointed. Those three things. Educated about what they're talking about, experienced, and, you know, a gifted, gifted and empowered by God to, to talk about what they're talking about. Maybe a gifted teacher, you know, teaching gift. So, and I, I apply that across the board when I need, you know, if I needed some sort of a counselor for something you know, say a financial counselor, educated, experienced, and anointed, even a doctor. That's what I would like to have if you could find them. So let's get started here in chapter five, verse one. You son of man, take a sharp sword. You shall take it as a barber's razor to yourself and shall cause it to pass over your head and over your beard. Then take balances to weigh and divide the hair. A third part you shall burn in the fire in the middle of the city. So there's another prophetic act. See, so people can see it in the middle of the city where people are walking by. Maybe there's a market there. And I said this probably a year ago, but yeah, probably when I read through Ezekiel last time, our similar uh, yeah, prophet that was doing similar prophetic acts. But I envision the Lord sent him out to say the square to, in this case, he's going to burn hair and other things will I'll read through in a minute. And so people are going to walk by and see it. Well, what are they going to do? They're going to go home. They're going to discuss it. You know, did you see Ezekiel, that crazy guy in the in the market, burning hair? And the conversation is going to go around the dinner table and in the businesses and so on and so forth and in the temple even. And so um, you can imagine a greater impact than him just standing there shouting these prophecies or going to someone personally and, and passing them on. So it says, uh, a third, this is verse two, third part, you shall burn in the fire in the middle of the city. When the days of the siege are fulfilled, you shall take a third part and strike with the sword around it. A third part, you shall scatter to the wind and I will draw out a sword after them. You shall take of it a few in number and bind them in the folds of your robe. Of these again, you shall take and cast them into the middle of the fire and burn them in the fire. From it, a fire will come out into all the house of Israel. Verse 5. The Lord Yahweh says, this is Jerusalem. I have set her in the middle of the nations and countries are around her. She has rebelled against my ordinances and doing wickedness more than the nations and against my statutes more than the countries that are around her. For they have rejected my ordinances. And as for my statutes, they have not walked in them. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, because you are more turbulent than the nation nations that are around you and have not walked in my statutes neither have kept my ordinances neither have followed the ordinances of the nations that are around you therefore the lord yahweh says behold i even i am against you and i will execute judgments among you in the sight of the nations i will do in you that which i have not done and that which i will not do excuse me and i will what i will do in you that which i have not done and which I will not do anything like it in any, well, let me start one more time. I will do in you that which I have not done, and which I will not do anything like it any more, because of all your abominations. Therefore the fathers will eat the sons within you, and sons will eat their fathers. I will execute judgments on you, and will scatter the whole remnant of you to all the winds. Therefore as I live, says the Lord Yahweh, 
Surely because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your detestable things and with all your abominations, there I will also diminish you. My eye won't spare and I will have no pity. A third part of you will die with the pestilence and they will be consumed with famine within you. A third part will fall by the sword around you. A third part I will scatter to the winds and will draw out a sword after them. Thus my anger will be accomplished and I will cause my wrath toward them to rest and I will be comforted. They will know that I, Yahweh, have spoken in my zeal, and I have accomplished my wrath on them. Moreover, I will make you a desolation and a reproach among the nations that are around you, in the sight of all that passes by. So it will be a reproach and a taunt, an instruction and an astonishment to the nations that are around you, when I ex execute judgment on you in anger and in wrath, and in wrathful rebukes. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. When I send on them the evil arrows of famine that are for destruction, which I will send to destroy you, I will increase the famine on you and will break off, will break your staff of bread. I will send on you famine and evil animals and they will bereave you. Pestilence and blood will pass through you. I will bring the sword on you. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. Chapter 6 Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward the mountains of Israel and prophesy to them. And say, you mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh says to the mountain and to the hills, to the watercourses and the valleys, Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword on you and will destroy your high places. Your altars will become desolate and your incense altars will be broken. I will cast down your slain men before your idols. I will lay the dead bodies of all the children of Israel before their idols. I will scatter your bones around your altars. In all your dwelling places, the cities will be laid waste and the high places will be desolate, that your altars may be laid waste and made, destruct, made desolate, and your idols may be broken and cease, and your incense altars may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. Because remember, they had gotten to the height of these high places where they would sacrifice, make human sacrifices and a whole list of abominations. And, you know, it was an established system, right? So it had to be demolished. It had to be crushed. It, it, people were getting hurt. It was, like he said, chaos, turmoil. Um, the, the chaos that comes with an evil, disorderly civilization, absent God's light and love and truth, right? So adultery, murder, lying, mistrust, the poor people being taken advantage of, injustice, violence. So that's what's going on here. This isn't just an angry, vengeful God. You know, jealous because they didn't like him. <laughs> He's jealous like a like a husband over a wife or over a father and mother over their children because people are getting hurt. He wants to protect them. Verse 8. Yet I will leave a remnant in that you will have some that escape the sword among the nations when you are scattered throughout through the countries. Those of you that escape will remember me among the nations where they are carried captive, how I have been broken with their lewd heart, which has departed from me, and with their eyes, which play the prostitute after their idols. Then they will loathe themselves in their own sight for all the evils which they have committed and all their abominations. They will know that I am Yahweh. I have not said in vain that I would do this evil to them. Yep, he said he's going to do it. He's going to do it, and that should fear God in all of them. The Lord Yahweh says, strike with your hand and stamp with your foot and say, alas, because of all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they will fall by the sword, by the famine and by the pestilence. He who is far off will die of the pestilence. He who is near will fall by the sword. He who remains and is besieged will die by the famine. Thus I will accomplish my wrath on them. You will know that I am Yahweh when their slain men are among their idols around their altars on every high hill, on the tops of the mountains, under every green tree, and under every thick oak, the places where they offered pleasant aroma to all their idols. I will stretch out my hand on them and make the land desolate and waste, from the wilderness toward Dibla, throughout all their habitations, then they will know that I am Yahweh. Chapter 7, and this is the one with the heading, The Day of the Lord's Wrath. Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, You son of man, the Lord Yahweh said to the land of Israel, an end. The end has come on the four corners of the land. Now the end is on you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I will send my anger on you and will judge you according to your ways. 
I will bring on you all your abominations. My eye will not spare you, neither will I have pity, but I will bring your ways on you and your abominations will be among you. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh says an evil, a unique evil. Behold, it comes. An end has come. The end has come. It awaits against you. Behold, it comes. So it's actually personifying the end. And it's personifying it as an evil, a unique evil. It awakens. Isn't that interesting? Verse 7, your doom has come to you, inhabitant of the land. The time has come, the day is near, a day of tumult, and not of joyful shouting on the mountains. Now I will shortly pour out my wrath on you and accomplish my anger against you and will judge you according to your ways. I will bring on you all your abominations. My eye won't spare, neither will I have pity. I will punish you according to your ways. Your abominations will be among you. Then you will know that I, Yahweh, will strike. Behold the day. Behold, it comes. Your doom has gone out. The rod has blossomed. Pride has budded. Boy, that's a mouthful right there. Violence has risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them will remain, nor of their multitude, nor of their wealth. There will be nothing of value among them. The time has come. I'm seeing this as, this, you know, these wicked beaters and the ones that allow this witchcraft and immorality and demon worship and you know idol which is what the idol worship was and you know all the sacrifices to these demons which is opening doors for them to you know spiritual doors for them to come into their lives the community innocent people are being hurt picture and almost like waters churning right it's just these waters they're they're allowing these this water to get more and more and more heated and boil and um because it says your violence has risen up. Um, uh, what else? There's another phrase that made me think that. I don't know. It uses these different metaphors. The rod has blossomed. So that's another fullness of time, right? The, the, the bowl of iniquity is full and spilling over now, right? It's ripe. The fruit is ripe on the, ripe on the vine for this, these seeds that they've sown of, of wickedness. So it says, um, there will be nothing of value among them. The time has come. The day draws near. Don't let the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is on all its multitude. For the seller won't return to that which is sold, although they are still alive. For the vision concerns the whole multitude of it. None will return. None will strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the trumpet and have made all ready, but no one goes to the battle, for my wrath is on all its multitude. Verse 15, the sword is outside and the pestilence and the famine within. He who is in the field will die by the sword. He who is in the city will be devoured by famine and pestilence. But those, those of those who escape, they will escape and be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them moaning, everyone in his iniquity. All hands will be feeble and all knees will be weak as water. They will also clothe themselves with sackcloth and horror will cover them. You know, it also makes me think of the horrific genocide that went in, on in Rwanda. People said it was like literally like hell on earth. That's what happens when you invite wickedness into your into your land. And, you know, he's saying that horror will be on them. Horror. Because they push God out. There is no good other than him. If you if you reject him, you this is what you get. Horror. It's just the vacuum spelled with darkness. Okay? Light pushes darkness out um so it says horror will be on them shame will be on all faces and baldness on their heads they will cast their silver in the streets and their gold will be as an unclean thing the silver and their gold won't be able to deliver them in the day of yahweh's wrath they won't satisfy their souls or fill their bellies because it has been a stumbling block of their iniquity see there are there are instances where your silver and gold won't save you you know people rely on that as their kind of last resource against tyranny um this isn't the only place where silver was made worthless in the bible uh they won't satisfy their souls or fill their bellies because it has been the stumbling block of their iniquity as for the beauty of his ornament he is set in majesty but they made the images of their their abominations and their detestable things therein therefore i have made it to them as an unclean thing i will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey 
and to the wicked of the earth for a plunder, and they will profane it. I guess he's talking about the articles in the temple. I don't know. Is it sort of jump topic here? Verse 22. I will also turn my face from them, for they will profane my secret place. Robbers will enter into it and profane it. So that's the Holy of Holies there in the temple. Verse 23. Make chains, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Therefore I will bring the worst of the nations, and they will possess their houses. I will also make the pride of the strong to cease. The holy places will be profaned. Destruction comes. They will seek peace, and there will be none. Mischief will come on mischief, and rumor will be on rumor. They will seek a vision of the prophet. You know, that's a lack of peace, when rumor on rumor. Everybody's worried about what's going to happen. Um, you can see these things repeated throughout history. And, um, you know, when you see a nation start to become more pagan and start to have more public abominations, that's a good red flag right there. That's a red flag that repentance is needed. Um, and see here, they had a chance. They had a chance to repent. Okay, so verse 26. Mischief will come upon mischief, rumor on rumor. They will seek a vision of the prophet, but the law will perish from the priest and the counsel from the elders. The king will mourn and the prince will be clothed with desolation. The hands of the people of the land will be troubled. I will do to them after their way and according to their own judgments, I will judge them. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Chapter 8, last chapter. In the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house and the elders of Judah sat before me. So the elders of Judah came to his house. That's interesting. And they're in Babylon. So I'm trying to get a picture here. So they probably had an area where the exiles lived, maybe a community of little, I don't know. I don't know how they lived. Stone houses or tents or something. But um, so he's in his house and the elders of Judah sat before me. The Lord Yahweh's hand fell on me there. So he feels the Holy Spirit come on in. Then I saw and behold, a light. so he, the Holy Spirit comes to him. He recognizes it. He starts getting a vision and understanding some things. So then I saw and behold, a likeness as the appearance of fire from the appearance of his waist and downward and fire from his waist and upward as the appearance of brightness, as it were, glowing metal. He stretched out the form of a hand and took me by a lock of my head, and the Spirit, capital S, lifted me up between the earth and the sky and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the gate of the inner court that looks toward the north, where there was a seat of the image of jealousy, which provokes to jealousy. So, again, back to this happened a split second that seemed longer to Ezekiel. Like, what were the elders doing? Was he in a trance? And they were like, oh, he's gone again, you know? <laughs> or, you know, was he talking and could have this vision and telling him about it, telling them about it while he's seeing it? We don't know. So he, he gets taken up by this angel or the Lord, somebody, the spirit, takes him up, brought me in visions, it says, and he's looking at this image of jealousy. Verse 4, Behold, the glory of the Lord of Israel was there, according to the appearance, appearance that I saw in the plain. So maybe that rainbow glory again. Verse 5, Then he said to me, Son of man, lift up your eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up my eyes the way toward the north and saw northward of the gate of the altar this image of jealousy in the entry. <clears throat> he said to me, Son of man, do you see what, what they do? Son of man, do you see what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel commit here, that I should go far from my sanctuary? In other words, are you surprised that I'm far away and that there's darkness here? But you will see, again, yet other great abominations. He brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then he said to me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. When I had dug in the wall, I saw a door. He said to me, go in and see the wicked abominations they do here. So I went in and looked and saw every form of creeping things, abominable animals, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed around the wall. Seventy men of the elders of the house of Israel stood before them. In the middle of them, Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, stood, every man with his censer in his hand, and the smell of the cloud of incense went up. So 
So they're having their little witch coven type thing or their little masons, meeting of the masons, right? Something wicked. The little incantations with their incense. And the Lord showed him that. Verse 12. Then he said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in his rooms of imagery. For they say, Yahweh doesn't see us. Yahweh has forsaken the land. He also said to me, you will again see more of the great abominations which they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of Yahweh's house, which was toward the north. And I saw the women sit there weeping for Tammuz. Then he said to me, have you seen this son of man? You will again see great, greater abominations than these. He brought me into the inner court of Yahweh's house. And I saw at the door of Yahweh's temple between the porch and the altar, there were about 25 men with their backs toward Yahweh's temple and their faces toward the east. They were worshiping the sun toward the east. Last paragraph. Then he said to me, have you seen this son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land. See, this is what I'm saying. They have filled the land with violence and have turned again to provoke me to anger. Behold, they put the branch to their nose. I don't know what that was. Therefore, I will also deal in wrath. My eye won't spare. Neither will I have pity that they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. So here you have God's perfect justice. And one of the things he's doing here is he's proving that. You know, here's the evidence. Here's the evidence presented in the court of justice. Okay, because it is a legal issue. You go back to Deuteronomy. There was a covenant. If you do this, the blessing. If you do this, the curse. If you walk into this, you're willingly accepting the curse. And they knew better. It was passed on and passed on and passed on. And they chose to ignore it. They chose not to heed the warnings. So that's the end of today's reading. Tomorrow will be in uh, 9 through 12 of Ezekiel. So I hope you'll join me then. God bless you.